historical fisheries. Our commercial fisheries in the Pacific Northwest in serious trouble. Will removal of hydroelectric dams restore salmon fisheries? These are the questions being asked about the dams on the Klamath River and dams on the Snake River. An opinion by National Marine Fisheries Service states clearly that removing dams on the Snake River would not help in restoring salmon. As to the dams on the Klamath River, radical environmental NGOs, tribal governments, commercial fishermen, and governmental agencies believe that this action by the Klamath Basin Restoration Agreement and the Klamath Hydroelectric Settlement Agreement could restore salmon runs. This presentation will investigate the reality of salmon fisheries in the Pacific Northwest. Native tribes and environmental NGOs have claimed that prior to the dams on the Klamath River, there were millions of salmon that spawned in the river. However, this graph clearly demonstrates that after the first dam was put in place, the number of salmon increased significantly. They seem to forget that in a dry summer, the Klamath River turns into swamps and marshes and cannot support any kind of salmon run. This graph belies the claim that dams on the Klamath River have reduced salmon runs. Considering that coho were not native to the Klamath River, this graph is a clear representation that plantings in 1895, 1899, the 1960s, and 1980s gave a temporary rise in the coho population. However, when planting ceased, the numbers fell back to extremely low levels. As a scientist, I would state that the attempt to foster coho populations into the Klamath Basin was a failed experiment, as these cold water salmon prefer cooler waters north of California and Oregon. In 2002, tens of thousands of salmon died in the lower Klamath River and was attributed to toxic algae above the reservoirs upriver. Fish and Game did not sample the waters until a week after the kill. Based on this supposition, the state of California listed coho salmon as endangered and called for removal of the dams. However, Del Norte, Humboldt, and Siskiyou County Sheriff's Departments, in addition to the California Conservation Corps, believe the kill was caused by a large methamphetamine dump into a stream dump that emptied into the Klamath based on evidence found. A CDC study was performed on the reservoirs and were deemed to be non-toxic. The second most important salmon in California is the Chinook, which traditionally sported a spring run and in wet years a fall run. Before the dams, during a dry summer, there would be no water for a fall run of salmon, and with the building of the dams there is now a significant fall run due to the storage of water behind the dams. If we look at the graph, it is clear that since 1950, the actual tonnage of salmon off the California coast has been rather level through 2000, unlike the coho, which have basically disappeared. In this graph, it is clear that with the introduction of dams on the Klamath River, that commercial salmon production has increased significantly based on the historical numbers. I did not have data from 1925 to 1950 and created the time warp to display the numbers of both of these species. As we have seen from a prior graph, the numbers do not appear that bad, but the significant reduction of coho is what has affected commercial fishermen. In this graph, it is clear that since 1950, the total landings of coho and chinook in California has dropped significantly. However, if we look at the total tonnage of these two species caught in the Pacific Northwest, the total tonnage has not dropped significantly, but the coho and chinook have more moved north into Alaska. In 1950, 40% of these two species were caught in Alaskan waters, and in 2000, the Alaska catch has gone up to 75%. What we must now consider 
is what has caused the movement of these two species north into Alaskan waters. Based on this graph, it becomes clear that as the Pacific Ocean has warmed to historic levels, the salmon have moved north into Alaskan waters. In 1950, the total landings of all species of salmon was 149,000 metric tons, with 80% caught in Alaska, and in 2005, the catch was 403,000 metric tons, with 97% caught in Alaska. Without a doubt, this demonstrates that the introduction of dams and hatcheries has been a positive human intervention in the commercial salmon industry with a 273% increase since 1950. In an attempt to understand the movement of commercial salmon into Alaskan waters, research discovered that there's been a historic rise in temperature of the Pacific Ocean which directly correlates with the historic increased activity in the Ring of Fire volcanoes. As these graphs demonstrate, since 1990, 97% of all commercial salmon have been caught in Alaskan waters. Although California, Oregon, and Washington commercial fisheries are suffering, there is scientific evidence that the Pacific Ocean temperature increase is the primary cause. In an attempt to understand the historic rise in temperature, the following data has been investigated, and we should note that there has been a historic activity with the Ring of Fire volcanoes, global earthquake activity, and heat retention of the Pacific Ocean. All three of these graphs correlate with the temperature rise in the Pacific, and it is apparent that we are viewing a cyclic global event. In conclusion, coho salmon were never native to the Klamath Basin and should never have been listed as endangered. Coho decline in California and Oregon waters are due to a historic rise in temperature of the Pacific Ocean. Dam removal will not restore salmon fisheries in California and Oregon. Historic temperature rise in the Pacific Ocean possibly due to historic activity in the Ring of Fire volcanoes. The data to support these positions are from NOAA, NASA, National Marine Fisheries Service, WebEx in the United Kingdom, and Google Temperature. Thank you for listening.